Thank you for joining our session, uh, which is bringing more women into the C-suite post-COVID. Um, my name is Claire Chung, and I'm the moderator for this um, panel today. Um, I've spent my career, entire career in the luxury business um, in the last 10 years um, focused on direct-to-consumer and e-commerce. Um, I launched China's first luxury online retailer called Champagne in 2015. Um, and, and then I launched net a and was general manager of the Yuke's net a group in China. Um, currently, I'm the CEO of Igne Skincare, which is a startup skincare brand. Um, and I also serve on the board of directors of Bang Lucent and um, Dalsi. Um, so today's topic um, is um, is very dear to my heart. You know, women around the world have been deeply affected by by COVID nineteen. Um, it's driven millions of women um, out of the workplace. Um, the most re recent McKinsey report um, uh, finds that one out of four women have decided to downgrade their career or or leave the workforce versus one out of five men. Um, in the U.S., it's pretty shocking. 80% of the 1.1 million people who lost their jobs um, were women, right? And, and the biz biggest challenges have been for working mothers, um, senior executives that are women, and as well as women of color. Um, so now let's meet the, our international panel um, today. Um, ladies, I'd like for you to introduce yourself and then share with us from your perspective, you know, what is your biggest concern that you're seeing from, from your part of the world? Um, I'm going to start by time zone, actually. <laughs> so going out east, starting with Lily Chan, who's joining us from Shenzhen today. Lily? Uh, hello everyone, this is Lily from Shenzhen, China. Uh, really thanks to me, I feel really honored you know, to speak for Cosmic Citizen. Uh, I'm the founder of Storybridge Hong Kong, one of the best known English picture book training brands in, uh, in China. We have uh, established um, more than 15 uh, English picture book libraries across China. And we've also uh, helped more than 50,000 parents and teachers, you know, to improve their knowledge about English picture books and the teaching uh, skills about English picture books. And also, I'm a mother of twin girls. Uh, I accompanied them to read more than like 5,000 English and Chinese picture books uh, in the last 10 years. And I feel really proud that they started to uh, to uh, read English and Chinese books independently since they were four years old. I, you know, actually met May when I was still in quarantine, when I was just back from Hong Kong. Yeah, um, I feel really, you know, felt really lucky you know, to meet May because, you know, I was uh, all alone in the hotel and I joined May's 11th efficient reading workshop. But the way we receive training, you know, is quite different with the, you know, traditional way. Um, and we started, uh, we in total around like 70 people all across the world uh, learn from me in the WeChat group. And we, uh, 70 people start, uh, got up at five, five past half and we read uh, books like in one, an hour. And then we drew my maps and then we wrote articles about what we read. So I really, you know, learned a lot from me at that time. So as you can see, what we learned and what we did business is quite different, you know, from uh, before like COVID-19. Yeah. Thank you for that, Lily. Um, now let's go to um, Jeanette um, Lokstrup, who's joining us from Denmark. Good morning, everyone, and uh, so great to, to see you all. So I have a corporate background, so I have worked in, in, in several uh, big corporations at sea level, actually, uh, running communications, marketing, public affairs, sustainability, those kinds of, of areas. Uh, and I've been part of top management also for more than, uh, well, approximately 20 years. Uh, so that's sort of my background nowadays. Uh, I do more non-executive director roles. So that's what I've been zooming into lately, uh, as well as uh, teaching boards uh, on how to deal with the sustainability. So I'm also part of faculty writing a book at the moment on this subject. So uh, so I do several things nowadays. 
Um, I think when it comes to uh, to Scandinavia, we have of course also been hit by COVID, but we are probably one of the regions that have been more fortunate. Uh, it's been bad, but it's not been as bad as we have seen in in many other regions of the world. And of course, it has affected women. It has, of course, also affected the overall agenda because there are so many competing agendas going on right now in terms of how do, do businesses get back on track? Uh, how do we get back to talk about climate and broader sustainability themes? So my biggest concern at the moment when it comes to this is that there are so many competing agendas and how do we make sure that we get all the social themes at front again, uh, including uh, diversity, inclusion, and getting females uh, on top. Thank you, Jeanette. And um, now we go to Traman, based in London. Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is I'm Traman Nguyen uh, from London. Uh, I'm co-founder of CFT, the Center for Finance, Technology and Entrepreneurship, a, a company, a tech company that I built uh, four years ago uh, in London. But my background is not education. I used to be um, in finance. So I used to be a trader uh, in Wall Street in New York back in 99, perhaps the only woman trading my market at that time. Uh, and I moved to London. I set up uh, different businesses uh, in uh, larger banks uh, from Dresner, Klanwet Benson to wealth management with UBS. And a couple of years ago, I quit banking uh, to become an entrepreneur. Uh, and today uh, I build a CFT, which is the largest ed tech platform uh, for everyone to join the world of finance. Um, and it's called Center for Finance, Technology and Entrepreneurship. We are the fastest growing knowledge platform in fintech and digital finance for professional to upskill in this rapidly changing industry transformed by technology. Uh, why perhaps I'm here is because out of the 100,000 adults, professionals that we have trained in four years, 40% are women. So learning online uh, for them to upskill, to reskill and to find opportunities. Uh, and of course, uh, with COVID-19, as you said, you know, there's been a big drawback for a lot of women. And what we are trying to achieve here is to create a huge uh, platform for not only women uh, to learn, to upskill, but for them to find uh, opportunities uh, via in technology and in uh, finance. Uh, my concern is uh, finance uh, is transforming in a big way in a big way, and most poor people are not aware of it, that this huge transformation is taking place, disrupted by technology. Most people still think in a very traditional way. And we in this world that is changing fast, we must adapt and change and learn how to think like an entrepreneur. So the questions I would like to address is that how to help people to learn very fast for them to find opportunities and new opportunities in finance and technology and fintech, how to help women to lead after the post COVID and how to help them to grow, especially when things are not so obvious and easy. Uh, and I would be very happy to, to, to share about the fintech industry, which is a great new industry who is looking for talent. What's fintech? Fintech is allowing millions of people to gain access to finance. And we want to ensure that we have the power to transform the industry. And so women are more than welcome. Thank you, Sharon. I think that's a, a, a great topic that we'll address later as well, is really retraining and relearning and learning new skills. Um, I myself did the Cambridge course in circularity and sustainability, followed by another another um, in, in sustainable finance. So I doubled down on sustainability, and I think that's a, a topic we'll address as well. So thank you for that. Um, and now we go to Michelle, who's joining us from um, the USA. Your speaker's not on. It's not on yet. We, we can't hear you. It's on the lower left. 
sorry. <laughs> okay. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm very grateful and uh, honored to be able to attend uh, Harris, uh, Harris's meeting to share some of my personal opinion uh, through the invitation of a founder of a cosmic uh, citizen, Chen Tianmei, who is my mentor as well. I am Michelle, and my husband and I are involved with a network marketing company. We love the work uh, that we do. We have an uh, international team in 60 countries, uh, which over 700,000 members. We traveled to many countries just to, uh, to support our leaders by doing events, and we love to uh, be at home raising our children. We also love the time freedom that, uh, uh, that this business gives. I wanted to be in a business for myself, uh, so I choose a schedule that's uh, the best for me. I, uh, I also like the fact that I am my own boss and uh, don't have to ask for pay raises. Uh, there is no limit to what we can become. We uh, control who we who work with and how we work. It's the best way of life. It makes me feel secure to be uh, uh, with a company that has uh, uh, 20 years of success. That is the important part of uh, my uh, presentation when I meet a new uh, prospect who has been in the network marketing but have no uh, enjoy the success that we have been uh, experienced. So we still uh, feel the uh, commitment of uh, our founders, Davy and uh, Bianca Lissenby, to the future of our network marketing company. Their children and also their friends are part of our company, uh, which makes me feel safe and confident and hopeful for the next 20 years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, to to start off the, the conversation, I wanted to give share with everyone kind of the big picture view um, where we are today in terms of just in general in gender gaps, right? Um, so the 2021 Global Gender Report um, from the World Economic Forum um, uh, has really three key takeaways I wanted to share. Um, number one is the biggest gender gap um, exists in in women becoming politically empowered. Um, it even widened even further during during the COVID. So only 26% of parliamentary seats are held by women and only 22% um, of the world ministers um, roles are held by women, right? Um, the second point is on economic participation in, in opportunity. Um, the gap is um, at 50%, 58% globally, um, which is a bit marginally better than the past, but it will take 267 years to achieve parity. Right, which is pretty shocking. So there's still an enormous amount, uh, amount of work to be done in in this this space, and especially if you consider um, in terms of education, um, attainment, and health and survival, the gap is nearly closed. Right. So despite being more or less at parity in terms of being educated and the degrees and and um, there are huge gaps in in, in pay, um, and and of course even bigger than in than in, in leadership in political roles. So I think that's a um, it gives you a, a big picture of where the world stands today. Um, the top five countries leading in in gender um, equality are number one is Iceland, Finland. Norway, New Zealand, and Sweden. And since the, the Scandinavian countries are doing so well, you know, we wanted to hear from um, Jeanette. Um, um, uh, you know, how have you seen COVID impact, let's say, Scandinavian women versus um, the rest? So first of all, um, as I said to begin with, uh, I think Scandinavia broadly has been fortunate when it comes to to the effects of COVID. So even though we have been through some very, very tough lockdowns, uh, we've also seen that the governments across all of Scandinavia have been supporting business life very much. So uh, we have tried to do whatever we could so that people were not losing uh, their jobs. Some people have lost jobs, but not as many as, as we could have had because of this massive uh, investment from uh, the government and the tax taxpayers' uh, side. So so that's, of course, a good start also for women, that most women uh, are able to stay in, in their jobs. What we have also seen is that during the lockdowns, 
um, many people have been able to work from home since the societies here are, are, are very digital. Um, and actually for many women, it's been a bit of a relief because they didn't have to commute and, and they felt that their, their day to day was a bit easier, at least on the short term. Um, what we see now is that companies are trying to, to work with, can they even do that after COVID? So can they make sure that the working place are more ready for people wanting to work a bit more from home? And the discussion is, is this then an advantage for women or is it not? Because the risk is also if females are taking the opportunity to work mostly from home, will it then be them who are doing all of the housework? Uh, will it then be the females who are not, you know, doing the networking in the working space? All of that, that it also takes, uh, you know, to build your career. So while it may look like a great thing, uh, you know, to work from home, there are also some risks that comes with that career-wise. Um, then I'd say the discussion in Denmark is very much about, so what do we really need to do to make sure that we have equality and that we have diversity at all levels? Uh, and it comes back to things like understanding how strong the business case really is. Uh, as some of you have also said, I mean, having females on board does work. It helps the bottom line and the top line. Uh, we're also discussing Things like, um, should we have more regulation when it comes to sharing maternity slash paternity leave? Because that's also uh, at a time where careers, men and women go in different directions once people have their, their first or second or third child. Uh, we're discussing very much this flexibility in the workplace, like working from home and so on. How can we do more of that without it being a disadvantage for women? Um, and also, how do we work with bias when it comes to recruitment processes, um, you know, uh, making sure that we are actually looking much more broadly at, at competences and making sure that we are not too colored when it comes to uh, what does a female manager look like uh, and what does she not look like and so on. So, so there are many things going on in this arena at the moment to make sure that we advance this agenda even further. Yeah. Um, what about childcare? I think that's a really important point in terms of the the, the national um, policy to support um, to support that. Is yes. Scandinavia doing something different than, than other countries that we should be? Yeah, I think everybody has access to uh, to more or less uh, free childcare. Uh, you know, from uh, the kids is around six, seven months old or something, uh, and that helps a lot. Because, I mean, there is no reason that you don't get a job because you can have access to this childcare and it's, uh, it's ingrained in, 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 in all families. So, so that's, that's definitely part of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. I think that that's a the huge, um, huge um, 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 support for 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 women, and it's a and I think this is one of the reasons why women should get more involved in in politics, right? Is to see that policies policies are an, an, an act to support that. Um, you know, I know that as someone that's moved around the world from um, U.S., Europe, and Asia, you know, one of my key things is is what is the cost of childhood uh, child care in that country before I decide to move, and because that has a big impact and and those are 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 some things that um, we forget about that you know we need to be um be be in in, in a situation where um where um you're able to 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 basically uh, have that support right yeah, yeah. Um, i know women in in the in the united states for example if it it's kind of a double edged sword if you don't make enough income if you're not at a senior level enough to afford childcare, some women just stop working, right? Um, and so I think that's these are these are bigger bigger topics, um, but definitely something that um, you know I, I hope that post COVID that women will become more involved in 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 in, in, in making changes and in, in setting up different types of communities where they can support, right? Um, uh, Tranon, I'm I'm curious. Um, you know, during during COVID, since you, your your business empowers women and retrains them, have you seen more women leaving the corporate world to become entrepreneurs through your 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 platform? Yes. No. Thanks, Claire, for asking. Um, I must say that you know, first, um, just so that it's it's a fact, but um, you know, being in finance, we must know that 
the industry is non diverse so there are not a lot of women uh, in finance i used to be you know in traditional finance and the industry is still a quite male oriented industry that's a fact um, and and i will speak about you know what i see which is my industry which is finance but with covid-19 what we have seen is perhaps an acceleration of women wanting to learn because they they see this opportunity being at home and using online education to upskill or get into an industry that perhaps you no know, will give them opportunities so they see that fintech and finance industry is um, because there's a lot of people saying that the industry is in need of talent we need people you know from diverse background to join an industry and we are welcoming new women so we are seeing the rise of women wanting to learn more about what are those opportunities so that i see now when it comes to making that jump to being an entrepreneur i think it's another level i don't think that is easy of course there are in the uk for example quite a lot of organization online such as innovate finance in the uk or cft where during the covid-19 we have Uh, created an online platform to allow female entrepreneur to connect together so that they can learn and be connected also for those who are, have already started their own journey so we are seeing but when it comes to uh, jumping into leaving the corporate world to become an entrepreneur i must say i i i think it's a still a struggle for most of the people they are willing to learn they are willing to learn uh, and um, but uh, it's not something we see that i used to see prior to covid-19 uh, being a woman entrepreneur we know it's difficult so 30 40 50 year old is not something easy for most of the people uh, and we cannot be alone so we have a strong engaged community where we get to them to connect together to network to learn and to perhaps also find co-founders and start their businesses what we see is two things people are coming to us and say how do i launch my fintech startup what is customer centricity how to use data uh, how to use digital school as tools how to scale businesses all of this uh, they are willing to learn and this is what we are providing them not only hard knowledge but also soft skills knowledge so that they can start having some very good strong foundation when it comes to launching it i think um is not that simple we are not seeing a big improvement we saw a little bit of a drawback since learning is one thing but when it's come to doing it's another thing um and but i must say as a, um is that sometimes and and that's my view is that you can learn how to be an entrepreneur and then join perhaps a larger organization and that is learning how to think like an entrepreneur and sometimes in large banks or organization any industry people are looking for skills like entrepreneur how do you think like an entrepreneur that you can acquire but build within a large organization without taking much risk so this is what i see more and more which is not necessary women entrepreneur but more women entrepreneur and that's a that's a really great point um and and thank you for sharing that because i think there's a lot of huge potential um for women to to join the to be innovative right um um do you see people actually changing industries into fintech from other industries lots yeah certainly the, 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 it's 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 uh, you know when i started cft because i was coming from an industry that was very um, non diverse and when i set up cft i thought to myself oh i will have to and this is a huge uh, a, a huge um, it's it's an industry that is ill prepared Uh, the industry of finance is ill prepared people are not digital enough they don't understand how to use technology and aligning finance together mm -hmm. and so my first uh, assumption was that we need to help and support all the finance professional to upskill very quickly but when we launched cft what we've realized is that we are coming with people from totally diverse background coming to us because they want to get into in the industry and before having access to knowledge in finance was very 
include uh, exclude it was not yes, so, it yes. was something that was not inclusive so today we are having people that are uh, marketer uh, entrepreneurs technologists uh, people from totally diverse background coming and learn about fintech which is very encouraging yeah that's fantastic um it's a, it's a, it's it's great news which is good to hear um Louis, what about your pers- the perspective of china how have chinese women adapted during during covid uh well here in china i think the challenges and the new opportunities appear in um uh, exist at the same time so i'll take my you know um uh, training company as an example like before COVID-19, you know, StoryBridge Hong Kong mainly focused on the offline business. Uh, we had held like uh, English training workshops for the teachers and uh, parents. And we also franchised, you know, a lot of like um, uh, English libraries. But, you know, when, uh, when the, you know, the, the outbreak of, um, of COVID-19, uh, Story Bridge Hong Kong also, you know, stopped uh, um, our business for a uh, for for a little while, but you know, luckily, um, after you know, after Chinese New Year, we started to think about you know, we need to do the online business. So um, you know, um, so um, right after the Chinese New Year, we held a twenty one day you know reading activities for our parents and uh, teachers. And we received a lot of positive feedbacks from different families and parents, and they really appreciate, you know, our efforts. And they, they thought that, you know, the, the the activities really eased their worries and also kept them uh, reading habits, you know, in a very fun and interactive way. So that's we had, you know, this new idea right after the Chinese New Year. We uh, pl- we started up our new online business, and we really did a good job in the last uh, one and a half year. So we are lucky. But however, you know, as reported, sixty to seventy percent of English training centers were locked down because the uh, pandemic. So that's um, really bad news. But you know, um, the lucky thing is that you know, um, I think women are more better at connecting with uh, with people, especially like in online uh, model. So uh, in China, there is, you know, uh, women do business through like WeChat group and also like TikTok. Um, you know, the word big V, they may, they really like uh, generated a lot of revenue like in one night. Uh, they say that, you know, for one big women, a big V, they can generate the one uh, the enormous revenue than the traditional company generated in one month. So there, there are you know, <laughs> a lot of new opportunities in China right now. Yes. So yes. because you know people really do business in different ways. You know we used to do business like in, um, in offline, but now we focus on the online business much more than before. You know, yeah. Before the pandemic. And I think that becomes interesting because women are natural um, um, networkers, right? And community yeah. leaders, and digital in, in empowers them. So it, it, that's a great segue in, in, into Michelle because, as as um, the co-founder of, of For Life, you work with network marketing. Have you seen this, uh, you know, increase of, of women coming to you for for job opportunities during during COVID? Uh, yes, for asking. Yes, under the impact of the uh, pandemic, the world economy has uh, collapsed. However, the company uh, uh, who we currently work at for hasn't been uh, affected by economic uh, downturn or decline. On the other country, uh, the, our business has uh, continued to raise uh, from the beginning of the last year to the present and has even achieved a great re- result. Uh, in particular, many uh, many women who has ne- have never been successful in business um, has reached new uh, milestones in their performance almost every month and became a uh, powerful entrepreneur working independently uh, from home. It's interesting to know that uh, 80% of the leaders led our uh, driving the business in network marketing are women. Uh, the pandemic uh, has really given Women a space where we have no limits in the in a world that uh, uh, full of limits. It really is a perfect business model for women. Thank you. 
Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, we, we actually have 10 minutes left, so time is really passing quickly. Uh, I'm going to go to, um, I think we'll touch quickly on technology. Um, I think that's really a, a very important topic, you know, um, having um, lived in Shanghai for, for, for six years and now um, relocating back to, to Europe, we see, you know, technology is, 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 changing at a huge, huge speed. Um, Trauma, I'm in your business um, launching the world's first fintech online learning portal. Um, what are some of the insights you can share on the new training? But also, I think this is really important, some of the cultural gaps between between Asia or maybe the rest of the world. Because I, you know, from what I was seeing, people are learning coding much earlier, especially women getting involved in Asia um, more than, let's say, in the EU. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yes, no, thanks, uh, Claire. No, very quickly, I think my view is that um, we, we are, to come to your questions with regards to new training, I think they are huge, you know, we are at this age compared to 10 years ago, I keep saying to everyone, please keep using e-learning. You know, we have so lucky to be, you know, having free access to every amount of knowledge you can get. Uh, get a skill yourself, you know, about, you know, if you are an entrepreneur and want to really build up your businesses, learn how to use digital skills, learn how to use artificial intelligence. You know, all this is available everywhere. And I would encourage every woman to learn about this. Uh, for us, as an example, you, there, there are like hundreds and millions of different courses. Of course, you know, you want to have a structured courses where you can learn, but also joined after that uh, a network of people where you can go much, much deeper, but uh, use, you know, all this uh, online learning. What I want to share about the new ways of training is that, and which really helps women, is try to get something that you can use very quickly and adapt to your job straight away. Uh, they are, uh, we, we at CFT, but that's, you know, just as an example, but we work closely with some high scale up startup. Learn how to use real life case example. We've launched a program, Extrapreneurship with Uber. Uber entering the world of finance using technology. You have the chance to work and to uh, work closely with the chief product officer of Uber, teaching you in eight weeks how do you launch a, um, a project at scale, you, working with people from totally diverse background that you've never worked with. In eight weeks, you get some tangible exposure. And we are starting to see women getting into those programs to learn. But there are multitude of programs. When it comes to East and West, I must say I agree with you. In uh, East, I've seen, you know, women always willing to learn fast because they are in this, and we know, I mean, we have this survivor uh, mindset, which <laughs> if we don't learn, we'll die. So we need to make sure we always learn and learn and learn. This is in our nature. So I've seen, you know, since four years I've been here, women learning like that, they drink water. They just don't want to miss it out. And with COVID-19, we are seeing more in the Europe, people saying, oh, I'm going to lose my boat. I'm not going to be able to jump on the rocket if I don't learn. So they are starting to learn. But it takes because there was this COVID-19 who has triggered that, you know, uh, that, that danger in them. So, yes, we are starting to see, you know, uh, more and more um, women uh, learning in, 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 in this um, uh, part of the world, much more about how do you use digital skills, having the hard knowledge, which is important about data, artificial intelligence, and fintech, um, open banking, payments, all this is important. But, um, but I think it was uh, COVID-19 who has accelerated that. Uh, we, the gap is still widening, I must say, but uh, it's it's now a, a strong focus. And at the government level as well, we are working more and more with government, encouraging more people uh, around the world to upskill themselves. Mm, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That that is a really important point, and I I, I think that the technology and 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 uh, relearning are, are are key skill sets that um, we we all should embrace. Um, on this panel, we're women who have moved really between you know corporate life and entrepreneurship and and and, and back to corporate. Um, for that one out of four women, 
um, who has who's who needs another option today due to COVID um, is becoming an entrepreneur and coming together with other women, um, as you mentioned, to become your co-founders or, or forming new businesses. It, that could be a potential, let's say, new way of creating a, a C-suite, you know, formed and and led by women. Um, Lily, you started your own company in Hong Kong and, and also left the corporate world. What was that journey? As we said, it, it is scary. It is, uh, you know, frightening to make that jump. But share with us your, a bit your, your journey. Um, actually, I feel I really enjoyed this journey, you know. Uh, I actually, when the Chinese were born, I was still working in Hong Kong at uh, Pacific Coast Bank, uh, a U.S. Bet uh, betting company. I left that corporate because I only have like four weeks of maternity leave, but I had to take care of my uh, twins, so I left that corporate at that time. Um, when twins were four years old, I started my own company, but it's a story bridge children first. And two years later, I started Story Bridge Hong Kong because I started to franchise English picture books across China. And we really need a lot of equipment you know, during that two years. As, as I mentioned, we um, franchise in total 15 English picture book libraries across China. Um, also, you know, I had a really flexible uh, schedule so I can have more time, you know, to grow and learn. Just like as, you know, China mentioned, you know, women, Asian women especially, you know, really like to learn. Um, um, I had more time to learn and grow. And also I had more time to accompany my children, my teens to read. So that's why they can start to read English and Chinese books uh, since they were uh, four years old. And I also, also you know, um, had time, you know, to join the parents' meetings and in you know, the celebration parties, etc. Mm -hmm. So, to, you know, being fully involved in uh, in the activities uh, with my twins, um, I, this part really make me feel uh, happy and satisfied with my uh, career, you know, with my uh, journey. Yes. Yeah, having that that freedom, I think, is something that flexibility. You know, I think that's something that um, all women uh, appreciate because it's really based on the outcome versus you know a timeline showing up from nine to five. Um, Jeanette, as a board member of the Danish Foundation for Entrepreneurs, um, what 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 do you see as as ways of supporting women to make that journey to to become their own uh, to become an entrepreneur? So we've discussed that a lot uh, in the board, and it's also one of the purposes of having that board, and that is to ensure that we have more girls, women uh, joining and, 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 and creating their own businesses. And what we have found from research is that to make that happen, uh, we need to be able to talk about more female role models. I've seen a lot of them today. Uh, so we need to share those stories more because that will inspire the next generation of, of, of women. Uh, there's also a piece about making sure that female entrepreneurs have more access to financing. We can see that's a problem. So we need to work dedicated to make that happen. There's a piece around networking. You've also mentioned it. And not that women just network with other women, but that they get into the networks where the power is, that where the money is. Um, that we need to work on. And then finally, I would say education. So what we're trying to do in Denmark is to get entrepreneurship into the schools, into the education from a, at a very young age, and then all the way up uh, when people are taking their degrees. So we want it to become an integrated part of learning, getting your education that you consider uh, becoming an entrepreneur as well as consider to go to take a traditional job. So we want it to become integrated into everything we do education-wise as well, and that will help, we believe. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we're, we're actually um, almost um, out of time right now, but I just want to kind of um, uh, give a, um, a summary and then have you all just say maybe 
your one piece of advice, right, um, to two women right now. I think um, it's been a, a great um, learning from all of you, and I, I think there are some key takeaways, and that is is really um, um, retraining. Um, think about technology. Um, you know, digital does empower. I believe that that it, it, it allows you to to explore and network from home, right? And I, I think that's a really important point to try to embrace um, to find a, a solution and to prepare for, let's say, life post-COVID um, once this, this ends. Um, and I wanted to, to, you know, go around again and, and get your, from all your experience, um, your one single advice to, to women now that's looking for, for a new path um, or to, to basically or improve themselves. Um, you can go for for Lily. Uh, okay. One, one piece of advice. <laughs> yeah, one piece of advice. Well, I think in the, in the future, you know, not just women, uh, actually, you know, people if they want to start up their own business, they really need to consider seriously, you know, about two business models, you know, both offline and online model. Uh, but we sh we will surely you know encounter a lot of new challenges. But I believe you know there are also a lot of new 